the wind did not stir, the sea did not sway, the ship did not move. Vandiyadeva was sitting for a while towards the ocean which looked like a calm lake without waves. Only in his heart did the waves rise and fall. Suddenly he stretched both his arms towards the sea and shouted, Om Vreem Ram Vashit, he shouted. In the next moment he took the knife in his hand. He whirled round twice. Yes. Yes. Samadra Rajan is asking for a sacrifice. He is asking for a double sacrifice. He is asking for the sacrifice of two suras who attack and kill sleeping people. He says that if you give the sacrifice, he will let go of this tree above. Where? Come immediately, two such people, stretch out their heads. Hurry! He insisted. Ravi Dasan stared at Vandiyathevan in astonishment. Ha! 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 He laughed like a ghost again. Brother! What game is this? He said. Brothers! This is not a game, a verb. A little while ago I fell asleep while I was tied down. Then I dreamed. A blue figure stood before me, like a goblin, combining sea and sky. It said something, I didn't understand what it was then, I understood now. Master of Magical Tricks Samadra Rajan demands the lives of two devotees of Kali. If not, he says, he cannot let this ship go up. He is not satisfied with the lives of six rogue Arabs. Come. Hurry. Saying that, Vandiyathevan raised the knife in his hand towards the sky. Ravi Dasan and Devaralan looked at each other. Ravi Dasan said, Brother. I have never seen such a good person in making stories. He said. Vandiyathevan said, Oh. Don't you believe what I am saying? Am I making up a story? Answer these fools yourself, Samadra Rajan. He shouted. His voice seemed to be heard in the ears of Samadra Rajan. It seems Samadra Rajan wanted to reply to that. A strange sight was seen in the sea. In all four directions as far as the eye could see, the sea was a thrill. A thousand tiny little waves rose and fell. It only took a minute. In the next minute all those waves turned into tiny drops of silvery foam. The white foam splashed across the vast expanse of sea. How would it be if there were billions of billions of tumpy flowers rolling and rolling on the broad grassy ground? Such was the view of the sea at that time. Yes, a light breeze, a sweet cool breeze caressed that tree for a moment and went beyond. A thrill ran through the ship. Vandiyadeva's body, which was parched due to the heat, also shivered. Ravi Dasan and Devaralan ha ha ha. They laughed at that. Brother. Samadra Rajana has answered your question. We must be ready to sacrifice ourselves. Said Ravi Dasan. Vandiyathevan's heart is troubled. The churning in the sea and the sudden change had stunned him. Aha! What is this? Where have all those thousands of tiny waves and millions of white foamy drops gone? Has it disappeared? Again the sea is calm and looks like a sheet of green. Did the scene you just saw really happen? Or just an illusion? Perhaps this magician is Ravi Dasan's magical power. See that? Brother. Even the sky approves of what the sea has said. Ravi Dasan pointed to the southwest direction. In the direction he pointed at the corner where the green sea and the blue sky meet a tiny piece of black cloud rose a little high. The upper part of that black piece of cloud was checkered with a blood-red color. Vandiyathevan would never have noticed this appearance on normal days. Is it any wonder that clouds are seen at the meeting point of sea and sky? No. However, that small appearance also disturbed our hero's mind a little at that time. Vandiyathevan managed in the next moment. We must not fall into this sorcerer's trap. He confirmed that in his mind. Waking Ravi Dasan once and Devaralan once, he said, then why the delay? Come. He said and threw the knife. Father. We wish to pray to our ancestral deity before we sacrifice ourselves. Give us half a second. Said Ravi Dasan. All right. 
Say your prayers and come at once. Don't show me any of your magic spells. It won't work. Vandiyathevan said. Here we come and leave our weapon here, look. Said Ravi Dasan. So both of them put down their weapons and went to the other side of the forest. At that time Vandiyathevan also needed that half century. An inexplicable disturbance arose in his soul from the apparitions in the sea and the sky that made his body relax a little. If necessary, he had decided to finish off both the Kirathakers with a single blow. But there was a doubt whether he would have the strength in his hands at that time. So he needed some time to strengthen his mind and get full strength in his hands. At the southwest corner attention again went to chance. The clouds, which had appeared only a short while ago, had now grown to full height. The crimson color faded a little at the top. The clouds seemed to rise higher and higher. The wind, which had stopped with the first hissing, began to come calmly again. The sea was also disturbed. Little waves started dancing. The clouds were getting higher and higher in the sky. The wind speed also seemed to increase. The ship started rocking slightly. Between the roar of the wind and the roar of the waves, what was that noise? I heard a sound as if something had fallen into the sea. Vandiyathevan looked back. Ravi Dasan and Devaralan were missing. There is no wonder. They will be on the other side of the ship. The sails and center deck of the ship hid them. Cow! What is this? Can't you hear the sound of the oars pushing the boat? Vandiyadevan immediately ran and reached the other side of the ship. What he saw there really startled him. Little did he expect that to happen. He thought that they had gone to discuss to reconcile him. But they had cut down the little boat they had tied together on the other side of the ship and were getting out and into the sea. The oar hurt and they started to push the boat. Ravi Dasan smiled when he saw Vandiyathevan. Brother! You see we don't want to be victims of Samadra Rajan. He said. Vandiyadevan realizes his position in a moment and leaves himself alone in that big forest, and they go. He knew nothing about the art of sailing. He doesn't know where the ship is in the sea and where it will end up if it goes in any direction. They leave him in such a dishonorable condition. Sinners! Shouldn't you take me too? He asked. Brother! Can Samadra Rajan go without a single victim? Said Ravi Dasan. The boat kept drifting away from the ship. Can we jump into the sea and catch the boat? Vandiyathevan thought for a moment. He immediately abandoned that idea. He also does not know how to swim well. The mind is not strong enough to jump off the ship. Even if they jump and stumble and catch the boat, what will those devotees do? They had revealed their secret to him. They also knew that he was never going to join them. They may try to kill themselves with their oars while trying to catch the boat. Isn't it possible to fight the people in the boat while just floundering in the water? Let's go. Go away. Better to be alone on this big ship than on a boat with those sandalwood murderers. Wasn't it by God's grace that he had survived so many troubles before? God will show some way to escape this danger. Let the sinners go. But is it okay to let them go alive? Where will they go ashore? What other tricks and tricks will they do? God exists, what can we do? It's enough to somehow reunite with the prince. But he shouldn't have abandoned me like this. They might have taken me on an elephant along with the flower pot. If you meet him again, you must fight hard. Is this the sign of Gadharma of your ancient Chola clan? To ask that. But will there ever be an opportunity to ask? Are we going to see the prince again? Why can't we? Senathapati and all Alwarkadian have seen that I am in this dilemma. Will they do something? If they had met the prince, they would have told him, wouldn't they? As Vandiyadeva stood thinking like this, he noticed that the boat had gone far out into the sea. How did the boat go so fast? Not only did the boat go, the ship he was on is also swaying slightly. That's why the ship and the boat got so far so quickly. Vandiyathevan also saw the waves in the ocean getting bigger. Is that all? What is this? 
one side is suddenly getting dark in broad daylight. Vandiyathevan looked towards the southwest direction. A little ahead he saw that the cloud, which seemed to be a cubit high, had grown enormous within it and had largely obscured the western sky. The clouds were still gathering in a furious manner and rising rapidly in the sky. While he was watching, they hid the sun, which was halfway down in the western sky. Then the western and southern directions became darker. The black clouds in the sky reflected in the sea and turned the sea water into black ink. The sea and the sky were of the same dark color, unable to distinguish where the sea ended and the sky began. The clouds rolled further and came above the head of Vandiyadeva. Then they started going down. Vandiyathevan looked in the direction of the boat. The location of the boat is unknown. It seems to have gone beyond the scope of his vision. The faint murmur of the wind has turned into a great noise of ho. Also, the noise of the waves which was getting bigger by the minute. The mats spread on the ship were beaten to death. Trees and logs scraped against each other and made the sound of a thousand kudumi doors opening and closing. Vandiyathevan looked up at the sails. From their position he knew that the ship was going round and round instead of going in one direction. They often said whirlwind. That whirlwind is about to hit. Vandiyadeva came to know that when the whirlwind blows, the mats should be spun from the mat trees and kept around. But how can he do it alone? Isn't that something ten people should do together? At least four, if not ten people. What does one do alone? God gives way. It's just that the ship reaches its destination. He soon knew the fate of the ship. So and so for a while after the waves and then drowning in the sea. Even if the thread breaks before it's full. Whatever the fate of the ship, there is no doubt about his fate. Death in the middle of the sea. That Kumbakanath Sadi did not say a word about this. Look. Suthadanam Suthadan. If you have to see him again. Madness. Why look at him again? Suddenly something hard fell on Vandiyathevan's shoulder. Small pebbles fell all over the ship. How those pebbles shine like marble. How these fall from the sky. Two or three more stones fell on his head, back and shoulders. Pain at first where they fall, then a chill. If you look at the stones that fell on the ship, ah. Are they melting away? Cow. Are they melting away? Yes, it's freezing rain, until then Vandiyadeva had never seen such rain, not experienced. He felt the joy of being able to see this miracle before dying. He enjoyed sitting on the deck and touching the melting ice stones. Dad what a thrill! Isn't it like touching fire when you touch it? But it doesn't act like fire burns the skin. Hot turns cold soon. The hail of stones stopped as suddenly as it had come unexpectedly. The elapsed time is not even half an hour. Then it started raining normally. Vandiyadeva noticed that the rain water fell on the ship and ran away and fell into the sea. He marveled at the cunning of the Chola carpenters. The ship was designed so that no matter how much it rained or how many big waves hit the ship and the sea water came on board, the water would fall back into the sea. A ship cannot be sunk unless its bottom breaks and sea water enters. Seeing this gave him some courage. Immediately a memory came. If the door of the room, which had been fastened to itself, was left open, water could seep in through it. He ran away and looked. As he thought, the door was open and flapping in the wind. He slammed the door shut. If you can't stand the wind and rain upstairs, you can even enter the room and close the door. Then you can rest assured that God is making the way. Vandiyadeva was moved to think that the two fools had left such a safe ship and boarded the boat. But the structure on that boat is also strange. No matter how much wind blows or rain falls, it cannot be drowned. As the boat breaks and sinks, there is a log attached to it. Grabbing it, the killers will escape to the shore. They will probably go ashore near the Cody bank. Vandiyadeva's soul from Kadakare jumped to Padayare. How will Emperor Thirukumari know his fate? Who is going to tell her that she drowned in the middle of the ocean while trying to fulfill her mission? Will the sea tell? Will the wind tell? Oh my god! 
shouldn't I have died before meeting that Matarasi? Shouldn't he have died a heroic death on the battlefield? Isn't it like seeing heaven and earth and immediately throwing it into the underworld? The wind speed was increasing. The turbulence of the sea was increasing. The ship's sails flapped and rattled like demons. The darkness grew darker. How can darkness be darker than darkness? It seems it can be. Suddenly a bolt of lightning appeared in the sky and flashed from corner to corner. The darkness that followed was blacker than darkness. Thunder followed the lightning, the ship rocked, the sea shook, the directions were shaken. Another bolt of lightning tore through the darkness on the horizon. It stretched further and further, spread out from branch and branch and in the next moment it disappeared completely, throwing jagged orbs of light across the sky and lighting up the sky and sea. The thunder continued. Mama! There is no doubt that galaxies are collapsing. More lightning, thunders. The sky has not yet parted, what a miracle! Vandiyadeva thought. At that very moment, the sky burst open. Through the bursting bubble, the deluge poured out. Yes it is not called rain. A sea was churning in the sky. It was like pouring through a sudden crack. The sea waves raged. Mountain peaks swaying as far as the eye can see in the light of lightning. The air bubble peaked. Taking the swinging mountain peaks as they were, Lord Vayu played by throwing a fan into the sky. Some of those water mountains came and crashed on Vandiyadeva's ship. A torrent of rain poured down from above waves came and crashed from all four sides. A song cannot be sung by a eddy on furled sails. Tolerating all this, the amazing wooden statue built by the Chola carpenters was spinning and spinning. But how long can it spin? How long can the ship withstand the onslaught of giant trolls? No, this second or the next, the ship must be full. Also Van Dye the van is a must. However, the thought did not tire him now. He considered his death to be a wonderful death. Like the rising waves, his heart also began to dance. Along with the roar of the wind, the roar of the waves, and the roar of the thunder, the voice of Vandiyadeva was also there. Ha! Ha ha! He laughed out loud. In order to get a better view of the whole scene he was carefully tying himself to the mast of the sail before him. As the ship rolled, so did the sail. Vandiyadeva also spun. I don't know how long the ship, the sails and Vandiyadeva were spinning like this. It could be eons, it could be seconds. Vandiyathevan had then reached a state of stillness beyond all the worldly emotions. The wind seemed to slow down a bit. The torrential rain has stopped. It was drizzling. The lightning and thunder seemed to have stopped. The sea seemed like a pitch black. Vandiyathevan was closing his eyes a short time ago as he could not bear the lightning of the lightnings. He was covering his ears with his hands so that he could not hear the loud thunder. Now he opened his eyes and saw, he removed his hands and opened his ears. Ah! Did I escape such a great whirlwind? Has God saved? Am I going to see the old Erlangamari again in this birth? Am I going to meet the prince? There should be no rush before then. Where is this ship now and who found it? How can you tell if it will dissolve safely? Even if the ship escapes, what is certain that I will escape alive? How many more dangers are there? When this question arose in Vandiyadeva's mind, a bolt of lightning flashed across the sky as if to answer it. Its brightness seemed to bring a hundred suns to a standstill before his eyes. At least you can see a little in the dark, nothing could be seen in that terrible light. Vandiyadeva was afraid that the lightning had taken away his eyes. The moment he got irritated, his ears were in danger. Vandiyathevan has heard many thunders before, he asked a lot even today. But now like a thunderbolt that struck say. Is that bang it was as if Indra's vage radio had entered through his ear and hit him in the skull. For some time the god could not even open his eyes, the sound of oi was heard in the ears. With his eyes closed he felt that a new light had recently spread above his head. Another strange sound was heard in the middle of the oi sound. It sounded like the sound of a fire burning in a forest, burning trees. 
Van Dye the van opened his eyes and looked. He saw the topsails of the ship on fire. Aha! Got it now. Why was that lightning so bright? Now it is clear why the thunder was so loud. The ship has either crashed or, very recently, crashed. So the sails are on fire. Two of the Puncha Goblins attacked and destroyed the Chola forest. Water and air failed. Now Lord Agni has appeared to accomplish the impossible, to achieve Varana and Vayu.